image, so we are deactivating it. So that means we, are, we will lose power to two of those 25 cycle pumps. In reaction to that, and uh, again, proactively, we do have a generator that is able to generate 25 hertz uh, power at, <coughs> within the uh, pump station that is able to only do one of the two. So we will have one of those 25 ready. The um, ultimate uh, loss of that is only 15%, so we will be able to operate at 85% at that uh, pump station. We are not concerned about that only because the area it serves is in the, in the Algiers area. There's a lot of storage and a lot of green space and capacity. So we, we're not concerned in terms of that, that specific loss. And we fear it's, it's a good decision, proactive decision to avoid damage to water infrastructure. We have requested that the Franklin uh, Avenue underpass be blocked in anticipation that uh, water will rise. And as we've experienced, the uh, draining of that area will be much slower uh, than the rest of the city. And uh, we want to be proactive and we want to make sure and, uh, to prevent people from driving through that underpass. Again, we, will, we are continuing to find a long-term solution to that issue because obviously it has been reoccurring and we want to avoid that in the future. Uh, all our pump stations are fully staffed and with redundancy. Uh, because we think that's very, very crucial. Uh, in terms of other critical services that the Sewage and Water <coughs> Board provides in terms of drinking water and managing waste uh, water, that has been um, well maintained and obviously there's a lot of competing interest and uh, what have you, but we, we stand ready to uh, continue to provide those critical uh, services to our residents and our visitors. Uh, we have, in, in, in order to improve efficiency at our pumping stations, we have cleaned all our screens. We removed a lot of, of the debris that is designed to be catched by those screens, and we, ha we are in the process of removing all that debris away from the pump station, again, increasing efficiency in, ter in terms of intake at those, at those spots. We have monitored uh, or have been monitoring uh, our canals and uh, were able to retrieve some large objects throughout the uh, canals that, uh, that that happened or occurred uh, th uh, during the Wednesday storm. A trampoline. A trampoline was one of the objects that we removed. How that made it there, who knows, but. Uh, we are proactively uh, assessing switching over our, from energy power to our uh, T6, our generator T6, which produces 60 uh, cycle. And uh, we want, we're watching the wind speed and uh, we're, we're in constant communication with uh, uh, our uh, partners at Intergy to make that decision proactively. We're not going to wait for any down lines or loss of power and then react to that. We think doing it proactively would be much more uh, effective and efficient and put us in a much more controlled situation. Um, finally, we have, uh, again, in the interest of being uh, uh, transparent and we want to ed educate the public at, uh, about what we do and how we do it. We've uh, stood up a uh, active uh, or I should say static map on our website showing all the pump stations that we have and how many each of these stations, how many pumps each of these stations uh, has. We are showing the direction of flow of all the canals that that obviously interface with the, with our pumping station, and one of the main things that we're trying to message and educate the public is that the closest the water that is closest to the pump station is the water that is drained last. It seems to be uh, thought the opposite, where where if we're closer to the pump station, that water disappears first. That is that is not true. So if you live near a pump station, you, your water will be the last to be drained. Thank you. Thank you, Gassan. Don't go far. You know that. <laughs> okay, Ramsey Green, who is our deputy director of infrastructure. Welcome back, Ramsey. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Ramsey Green, uh, Infrastructure, City of New Orleans. Um, very quickly on the flood response side, um, the Department of Public Works has uh, 12 vacuum trucks responding right now to 311 calls that have emanated since uh, Wednesday. Uh, we're also concentrating those trucks, cleaning out the um, under 36 inch lines, the catch <coughs> basins uh, on 
places where our um, public safety folks are saying, look, we had flooding adjacent to X hospital, go check it out, and our folks are doing that now. We have uh, all of our maintenance crews from the Department of Public Works out on the road, um, you know, working on both maintenance uh, and response to uh, flooding and preparation for it. We had over 400 311 calls related to localized flooding over the last 24 to 36 hours, and we're responding to those. Additionally, we have 10 tow trucks. Uh, in the event we have to initiate a courtesy towing program, uh, we hope we don't have to do that very often. If you're a driver, don't drive in water, real simple. Uh, and if you drive near any water, drive slowly. Uh, your wake will flood somebody's business or house, and that's a, that's a rough thing to do. Uh, stay away from overpasses also if you're driving. On the vertical infrastructure side, our folks are ensuring that um, generators are operable for both uh, fire, police, uh, and then as well as city hall. Uh, we had a scare on air conditioning here this week, and our folks jumped into action and got it back online very quickly. Additionally, um, coordinating with the federal and state government is really critical at this time. FEMA Region 6, led by Tony Robinson, has sent down uh, Ronnie Fairley from FEMA to ensure that we're doing what we need to do uh, in the event we have to ask for federal money to pay for these operations. And, and part of that emergency uh, VAC truck deployment was in consultation with both FEMA and uh, Governor's Office of Homeland Security, led by Colonel James Wascom. Uh, that partnership is critical. We have 21 active construction sites, uh, surface and subsurface throughout the city. They are buttoned up. Uh, those are between C uh, the City of New Orleans and uh, Sewage and Water Board uh, and SAFE. Just be aware if you're outside uh, of them. And then uh, finally, we have uh, folks uh, on standby in the event we have to initiate uh, preliminary uh, damage assessments in the event that uh, the city is damaged in a, in a, in a critical way. Uh, but we are ready, but we really hope uh, folks exhibit a lot of personal responsibility before your street floods. Go check out your catch basin. Pick up what's in front of it. Uh, the Sewage and Water Board cannot pump water that doesn't get to its assets, and that is uh, incumbent upon residents, businesses to get that stuff out of catch basins. Make it easy. Get that water there and the city will ensure that those catch basins are responded to and those smaller lines are, are cleaned out. Thank you. Thank you, Ramsey. Okay. Derek Bays? Where's Derek? Okay. Flood Protection Authority, thank you for being here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good morning. I'm Derek Bays, CAO of the Flood Protection Authority East. As of late last night, we closed up all Mississippi River floodgates in St. Bernard and Orleans parishes. That is the first time that we are aware that it's, that has been done before. Uh, we've also closed up the entire industrial canal. And uh, I also want to report that the surge barrier, Seabrook, and all of our other large sector gates has been, have been closed as of uh, 10 o'clock this morning. Additionally, this morning, in monitoring the lake levels, we recognize that the lake we're starting to see a rise. And so we hit uh, the three-foot trigger at the London Avenue Canal permanent pump station. We have now closed that, uh, the gates on that station and began pumping the canal down in coordination with Sewage and Water Board. We're continuing to monitor the other, uh, the lake level at the other two stations. The trigger for those is four feet, uh, and we'll work that with Sewage and Water Board if the need arises. We've also started closure of uh, excuse me flood uh, floodgates along Lakeshore Drive so we encourage the public to not go out on Lakeshore Drive we're already seeing some water out there uh, it's not a time for sightseeing so please allow us to do our job and keep that area safe we are closing Highway 11 floodgate uh, this morning. There is an emer emergency evacuation ramp that goes on the levee around that, uh, but we have done that in coordination with DOTD. We continue to monitor the situation at Highway 90. It is a possibility that we close Highway 90. We have not made that decision yet, and if we do, it will be done in conjunction with the city, the state, and DOTD. There is an emergency evacuation ramp at that uh, location as well, but we have people on site monitoring uh, as we speak right now. We're very confident in the system, whether it's on the river or on the hurricane system, that it is going to perform and do its job in this storm. People should feel comfortable and confident, but you also need to remember to take care of yourself and take care of your family. This is a serious storm and we cannot eliminate all risk, so please take appropriate precautions. Thank you so much, Mr. Bays. Appreciate that. We're going to go to Alex Wiggins with the RTA. 
Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. The RTA will continue to provide transit service uh, throughout this uh, weather event as long as it's safe to do so. We're currently operating operating a modified service. All of our buses are on, on the street, essentially. The streetcars have been replaced with bus service. Uh, we do ask the customers who use our paratransit service to work with us so we can prioritize medically necessary trips as well. Uh, the ferry service uh, connection between Algiers and Canal Street is actually being uh, operating under a bus bridge, and so the ferry service at Algiers Canal and Shalmat will be um, shut down for a few days. Uh, it's really important that we get you to your destination, but most importantly that we get you back home safety. So as this weather develops, we will be modifying our service. So the very best way to stay in contact with us is our ride line, 504-248-3900. 504-248-3900. Look at our website and social media so you can stay informed. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. I'm going to call on Colonel Donnelly, who is the Louisiana National Guard. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Colonel. Hey, good morning, everyone. I just got a couple of quick updates. I know everybody was here when the uh, governor did his press conference with the uh, parish presidents yesterday. He made the announcement that we we're going to mobilize 3,000 uh, National Guardsmen. Um, I could tell you this morning we went up to like 20, a little bit over 2,600 National Guardsmen, and we didn't get to 3,000 uh, this afternoon. Uh, that was fairly quickly since we had a couple of hundred that were uh, actually mobilized. So to ramp up a couple of thousand overnight was a, a significant movement by the National Guard. So we're sprinting to the uh, start line. Uh, understanding that this is going to be a marathon, we wanted to make sure we get uh, all our soldiers there. But you know we're going to be here over the uh, the long haul. Right now, uh, 1,100 of those are uh, in New Orleans, and uh, those are going to be mostly at the Morial Convention Center and the uh, Alario Center. Uh, we'll continue to move them uh, as necessary. Just to give you an idea of what the mission sets are, uh, right now there's going to be about 70 high water uh, vehicles that will be available with about 300 personnel that will be available for search and rescue. Uh, 600 of those uh, 1,100 personnel will be working with uh, Chief Ferguson. I've already given him a heads up. You know, as part of our uh, normal agreement we have with the city with our all hazards plan, uh, those uh, soldiers will be working in the districts, uh, augmenting, uh, working with the uh, NOPD with security operations. Uh, along with that, we're going to stage other assets uh, and commodities. Uh, right now, en route from uh, Roseland, which is our regional support uh, area where all our commodities are. Uh, we have trucks that are coming that have uh, 40,000 uh, MREs and also 80,000 bottles of water, which will be available <coughs> for commodities in the event that we need to push those out to uh, individual citizens. Uh, and we're, you know, we're making sure we keep track of the inventory so we can keep uh, refreshing that as necessary uh, as we move along. So I think that's the set going in uh, as we, you know, as landfall comes with the uh, with this tropical storm and then we'll flex off of that as needed. I mean, there's a lot of other assets within the National Guard around the state uh, that's helping the other uh, parishes that are surrounding parishes that are in need. But I could tell you, we also have some other available assets should we need like uh, engineer work teams. Uh, we have a task force bus operation with a lot of uh, soldiers that can get in buses to move uh, people to shelters uh, if that's necessary. So all of those things are kind of being set as we move through, you know, the first part of the storm, you know, which is the first is to protect the lives and uh, of the citizens and make sure we do the search and rescue piece. And then after that, uh, no telling what you'll need. So we wanted to make sure we're prepared with the amount of uh, assets and resources uh, that we need. It's better to have enough resources on site than not have any when you need it. So that's the kind of approach that we're taking. Uh, pending any questions, I'm mean, upset. No, thank, thank you so much, Colonel. And another uh, thing just to add, the buses that the Colonel mentioned are being staged at Zephyr's uh, Stadium. Zephyrs Field. Yes, ma'am. And um, that has uh, been provided, of course, uh, by the state of Louisiana, which is connected to the city as it relates to evacuation. Thank, Thank you, you, Colonel. Okay, we have uh, Colonel Thomas Sears for uh, the Corps of Engineers. Oh, yes, good afternoon, Mayor. Uh, the Corps of Engineers, our operations, we've actually gone to an enhanced operations uh, for 24 hours uh, through the event. We've uh, all have about 60 people um, working at the uh, district. Um, make sure that we take care of any issues that arise. Uh, we're continuing to uh, uh, to do our flood fight measures, and uh, we've been, uh, since November, we're in a flood fight, and we've, uh, uh, for the last six months, uh, every day we've been out uh, inspecting the levees and making sure there, if there's any issues out there that they're taken <coughs> care of. Uh, the IH and C lock has been closed, and we have put uh, sandbags on the, uh, on the uh, locked doors uh, up to a three-foot level, uh, just in case. We do not predict any overtopping based on the current modeling. 
We uh, also, um, we're not approving any waivers for construction within 1,500 feet of the levy. And uh, we have engineers on standby to assist any of our local and federal estate uh, issues or, or uh, agencies. Um, put in your questions, I'll have. Thank you so much. Now, I know uh, we, we have presence uh, this afternoon or this morning with the Coast Guard. Where's our, okay, there he is, come on. These assets are very important. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Lieutenant Sean Merrick here representing uh, Sector New Orleans, the Coast Guard. Um, the Coast Guard has all their assets in place and we're ready to respond. Uh, we anticipate uh, closing the river uh, probably sometime today and uh, we'll look to reopening that as soon as conditions allow. And uh, putting any questions, that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. All right, now, uh, Christian with the uh, New Orleans and Company speaking in regards to hospitality, our industry here. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. Well, we know that we have a large population of people checking out early and leaving our city. Um, and, and most of those people have flights, uh, they've changed their flights and they have confirmed seats on flights. We're asking that if you do not have a confirmed seat on a flight, to stay put and shelter in place. We're trying to mitigate snarls at the airport as we have people coming in. We have fewer airplanes available as the storm gets closer. So the opportunities to leave the city are gonna to start to diminish. So again, we just wanna remind everyone who is a visitor here and they're looking to leave the city, if you do not have a confirmed seat on a flight, do not go to the airport because you will not be permitted to shelter in place there. We advise sheltering in place at the hotel you're in now. Um, for those who are arriving in the city, we encourage you to sign up for NOLA Ready, of course, for real-time updates and alerts. And for uh, our, our hotel partners, we ask that you remind anyone who's checking out early that they won't be permitted to stay at the airport if they do not have a seat on a flight. So advise them if they don't have a, a confirmed um, seat on a flight to stay put at the hotel. Um, and those who are staying in, in Airbnbs, um, short-term rentals, please um, sign up for NOLA Ready. Take heed of the precautions and warnings that the, the city is sending out. Pay attention to local news and stay tuned to these press conferences as we get through this event together. Thank you. Thank you so much. Kevin Dolio. Thank you, Mayor, and that was a perfect segue. Yes, Mayor. it was. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, operations right now at the airport are normal but fluid. Uh, we do know of a few cancellations today already. Outbound, uh, Allegiant has canceled all three of their flights uh, for today. Uh, British Airways uh, has canceled its flight today and their flight for tomorrow. Uh, we do know inbound later. Uh, there's some inbound cancellations which will drive cancellations of early morning originators tomorrow morning. Uh, the majority of the airlines have issued travel advisories uh, for the New Orleans airport and they're waiving fees to, uh, to change flights. And as Christian indicated, uh, this morning we started seeing very long lines uh, in the ticketing lobby with a lot of travelers coming to the airport to make reservation changes in person. Uh, we know the airlines are working hard to accommodate everyone, but we strongly encourage travelers uh, to make their reservation changes over the phone before coming to the airport. Uh, the airport will stay open uh, unless weather conditions become unsafe or infrastructure is damaged. Uh, it is up to the individual airlines again to, uh, to decide when they'll stop flights from our airport. We do know there's other airlines having conference calls with their corporate offices late morning, early afternoon. They'll make decisions as to schedule uh, for the rest of the event. Uh, we're continuing our storm preparations for the facility uh, as uh, we approach landfall early tomorrow. The airport's emergency operations center is activated. Uh, we're maintaining close coordination with the airlines and our other tenants, and we're staffed up and ready to uh, respond as needed. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to call on Sandra Diggs Miller with Entergy. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Let me begin by saying I'm pleased to report that um, all of the customers that were affected by the Wednesday storm event have been successfully restored to power. Um, while our t crews have been working tirelessly to restore our residents to power, they have also recognized that we have a major storm heading in this direction, and our goal is to safely and quickly restore power. Our electric and gas crews are fully staffed, and we have alerted additional resources in order to accelerate restoration efforts when it is safe to do so. Restoration efforts proceed in an orderly manner. Scouts begin with assessment, then line crews begin repairs. 
Certain types of work, such as repairs, requiring the use of bucket trucks, cannot be safely completed while winds exceed 30 miles per hour or there's street flooding. I also want the public to know, due to the state of emergency, walk-in customer care centers are closed and are expected to reopen Monday, July 15th. However, customers will still have access to their accounts online via Entergy My Account. Customer disconnects are temporarily suspended during the tropical storm Barry weather event. We urge all customers to stay informed. Information on storm preparation and safety can be found at EntergyStormCenter.com. I also have a few important tips I want the public to be aware of. Customers are urged to stay away from down power lines and areas of debris. Energized power lines may not be visible among the rubble. Down lines should be reported immediately by calling 1-800-ENTERGY. Customers are reminded not to walk in flooded areas or standing water. Wet limb, tree limbs can conduct electricity. Customers are reminded to stay alert for natural, natural gas leaks. If they smell natural gas or hear blowing or hissing noise, leave the area immediately and call 1-800-ENTERGY from a nearby location. Should customers want to use a generator in the event of a power outage, they are encouraged to have a licensed electrician connected to their homes, and properly connected generators are a hazard to restoration personnel. If you haven't already done so, we are encouraging customers to download the free Entergy app at EntergyApp.com and sign up for text alerts by texting capital R, capital E, capital G to 368374. We encourage customers to take advantage of the tools and resources available so they can stay up to date and make more informed decisions for themselves and their families. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Sandra. And I, I'd like to call on Cynthia Sylvain Lear with sanitation. Where is she? Oh, come on, Ms. Cynthia Sylvain Lear. The Department of Sanitation continues to remove debris on major thoroughfares. The most important uh, message is, is that we will be suspending collections on Saturday outside of the French Quarters and DDD. And inside of the French Quarters and DDD, which has a very different collection schedule, they will, there will not be any evening collections. Contractors are collecting today on Friday, however, this really depends upon whether we have early rain showers, flooding in areas, but we are asking citizens who may have been collected today, remove your carts from the curb. And even if you are scheduled for collection tomorrow, outside of the French quarters in DDD, do not place your carts curbside. And although unfortunately some persons flooded earlier this week. We are asking that they do not put their flood debris on the curb. Please, please hold it on your property secured until Monday. We are not able to collect this at this time. That debris and flood waters will clog catch basins and create more problems throughout the city. So we have also been in contact with the area's landfills. River Birch Landfill will be closed on Saturday and Sunday due to this weather. The Gentilly Landfill will also be closed on Saturday and Sunday. And in fact, I'm in communications with them now. These landfills may close even earlier than scheduled today. They are very saturated with water this creates a problem with the movement of those heavy trucks and vehicles. So all of the collection contractors are in communication so that we can stay aware. This not only affects persons who are collected by the city's contractors. Please know for businesses, other properties that are not collected by the city's contractors, your collection company should have contacted you to make you aware of what they can and cannot do. But the message of not placing debris curbside applies to everyone. We need people to cooperate and to care about their businesses and homes and 
the neighbors, businesses, and homes. This is very important. We know we'll have a very big job on Monday, but we cannot respond. We have already received reports of persons putting massive amounts of things on the curb. We will try to get as much as possible, but just as every other operations group has mentioned, we can only do this work until it's safe to do so. So we need everyone's cooperation. Please secure your properties. On Monday, we will all be started very, very early. But again, if it is your scheduled day, even on Monday for collections, that's when you put your debris out. Please, please work with us. Listen to the reports that are given. We will give you further directions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Director Ann McDonald. Thank you, Mayor. The crews of Parks and Parkways stand ready to respond to any tree emergencies. We have a lush urban canopy, which is susceptible for failure with heavy rain and wind. We ask that you call 311, be specific. Is it a down tree? Is it a down branch? We will work until the wind sustain at 30 miles per hour or floodwaters. It won't be safe for our crews to go out after that. We will immediately begin responding and when it is safe for us to respond. As we stand here as the leaders of agencies, there are men and women behind us working behind the scenes to implement all our plans. I'm so proud to work with them and thank you as citizens to cooperate with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ann. And I'm gonna call on council members as they wish to come. Councilwoman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, as you can see, we are a united front and the city, along with our state and federal partners, uh, is, as, is as well prepared as we can possibly be for this particular storm. And now, of course, it's up to the residents of the city, along with our visitors, to prepare uh, themselves. And I'll be honest, I mean, you've got until about 8 o'clock tonight to make sure that you're comfortable, possibly for up to three days. Como dije ayer, uh, ahora es el tiempo para hacer todas las preparaciones para esta tormenta. Para esos que tienen necesidades especiales, puedes llamar 311 para que el Departamento de Salud sabes dónde estar y te pueda ayudar si, si necesitas ayuda. También, si quieres más información para Perry, puedes mandar un mensaje de texto a 888-777-888. 7 y puedes poner la palabra Barry para que puedas recibir más información de esta particular tormenta, pero te, tenga mucho cuidado porque como a las 8 de esta noche se va a hacer uh, un poquito peligroso. Gracias. Thank you so much. I was hoping you would keep that down. <laughs> <laughs> Councilwoman. Oh. Councilwoman. <clears throat> Good morning or good afternoon. I don't know what time it is. Uh, but uh, um, thank everybody. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for your leadership. And it takes a lot of preparation, coordination, and leadership to see what you have today, to have a plan in place to respond to a hurricane and to prepare for one. And what you see now is a government that is ready. And I want all the residents to know, and our visitors that are here, that we are ready to respond and we are prepared. And I just want to say that uh, we are we are ready to go. And I want to also say that I want businesses not to take advantage of our uh, of our residents who are going to fill up at the tank. You know, price gouging is in a, is in effect. And so, uh, just just want y'all to know it's it. illegal. Yeah, it's illegal, right? <laughs> right. So, thank you all. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Council Councilwoman. Yes. Good afternoon, and thank you, Mayor, for uh, col uh, having this collaboration with us and with us uh, to make sure that citizens are protected. Well, first of all, you guys have heard it here. There's buku of advice has been offered to you to make sure that you adhere to. Um, being very responsible, but I also wanted to emphasize a couple of things. Uh, for my kids, you guys, there's still time for you guys to charge up your electronics. 
So triplets, please make sure you charge up your your iPads, your whatever games that you guys have. Be prepared. Help out your mom and dads. If your parents have not bring in the trash can and you see debris outside, go outside and help out. Because you guys play a critical role in helping us to make sure that we respond well. For our adults, you know, I was thinking about this this morning, and as we go through this emergency crisis, we are going to be suffering from anxiety. There will be stress that will be added. So I want to encourage all the citizens to do a usha, relax. You know, because when you're in an anxiety stage, you cannot make responsible decision. And we've been through this before as a community. And so I want to remind all of our parents, all of our kids, to relax, be calm, and just make sure that we make responsible decisions for our family. Kính thưa quý vị, báo của Barry nó sẽ tới. Xin đi mong là sự an ninh của quý vị rất là quan trọng với thành phố. Xin quý vị giữ sự an ninh với gia đình, coi coi con cho các em. Make sure là các em nó có đủ đồ ở nhà. And cố gắng ở nhà đừng có bối rối về những nhiều chuyện. Tại vì nhiều lần báo báo nó tới nó sẽ làm cho mình rất là bối rối. Xin đi xin đi muốn khuyên quý vị là đền cứ đừng có làm làm cái gì mà nó có sẽ sẽ ảnh hưởng đến đến gia đình của quý vị. Cảm ơn quý vị. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Councilwoman. All right, Councilwoman. All right, thank you. We can see what a wonderful series of voices we have at the council and wonderful um, backgrounds and how we're really addressing this issue. So I want to thank my fellow council members. And it's obvious that we all stand in support of our mayor and the amazing, talented professionals and public servants that are behind us. And you know, they can only do their job when we do ours. And I just also want to thank all the citizens out there. I have seen unprecedented levels of volunteering, of working with their neighbors, of helping their neighbors get the needed supplies from water to food to any types of provisions and medication and cleaning out sandbags, getting texts in the middle of the night, showing me the, uh, the one, but please don't do it at night. Um, so we're really excited. I'm very pleased with the amount of work that all of our citizens have done. There's no other city that's better prepared that knows how to deal with this than our city. And you can see from behind me, all of these people have done this before. They're incredible professionals and we need to do our, our part in order to get this done. And from that, I just want to thank all the people out there from St. Rock to Algiers who have been doing tremendous work. I want to finish strong, but I also want to do a shout out to Algiers to make sure please do not drive on the levees. There are many of our neighborhoods along the levees in Algiers that back right up onto the river. There is no driving, and if you do drive, you're going to be reported immediately. And in addition to that, no parking on the base of the levees when we look at them and going into the, into the neighborhoods. So those are two things that we can all do as citizens and make sure that we will all be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. I call them the closer. Yeah. Well, they saved the best for last, yeah, apparently. Yeah, that's right. Um, there's a central theme that has been illustrated here today. And that central theme is that everybody who has spoken on this side is prepared for this storm. Now, the one variable in this whole equation is whether or not the people that are listening are prepared. The fact is that we need you all to do what you need to do to make sure that we can help you to get past this. There are a few hours left. If you haven't been out to the store, go and get the supplies that you need. If you haven't gotten gas, go and get that. If you haven't made arrangements to do whatever it is that you need to do to get your medicines or whatever you need to do for three days, you need to go and make that happen now. The window is closing. And again, we are holistically committed over here to do what we need to do. But you all got to help us do that. I also want to say an absolute heartfelt thank you to all of the people who have been doing yeoman's jobs and cleaning out catch basins. I got pictures from a, a young man, uh, Napoleon Benoit, took out five bags of garbage out of a catch basin. I've also been riding around through Uptown and seeing people on Carondelet Street and on Valence Street. And I don't want to start naming streets because it's too many to name, but people have actually been helping to do this. If you see debris in front of the catch basin, please move it. The fact is, is that the water can't get pumped out if it can't get in. It's very simple. And the water will not care whether or not the city moved the trash or you did. It can get into a place you don't want it if it can't get into the catch basin. And then in closing, we also need to give a very, very, very sincere thank you and appreciation to all of those thousands of city employees who are on the job. 
the people that, not just city employees, city, state, and federal employees who are helping us get through this. Their families are just as impacted as all of ours, yet they are doing their civic duties to help us get through this. So I want to give a shout out to them and hope that all their families are safe and say thank you to all. I see that sign back there that says, Soul is Waterproof 504. It sure is, y'all. We're going to make through this fine. We just got to do it together. And on Monday, we'll have a big party to celebrate all this is being done. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Now, as you can see and you've heard um, from all of our partners here, and we'll take questions at this time. No, she's in charge, LaTanya. Madam Mayor. Oh, Evans, New York Times. Mayor, the Evans Report is the city providing um, sandbags or sand or anything like that? We're getting some reports that there were a lot of volunteer efforts that maybe the, there wasn't a coordinated city effort for this. What's going on with the sandbags? The city did not uh, put forth a coordination of sandbags. We advised that if residents were interested in doing so, that they can do that. However, be responsible for removing the sandbags. What we have seen from previous uh, storms and distribution it puts a, a, a big strain uh, on our assets as it relates to the fire department. But more importantly, what we have seen is that the level of sand that ends up in our drains, it works against us. It works against the system that's in place to drain the city of New Orleans. In an urban environment, this is a best practice. However, if a resident feels that this is what they would like to do for themselves, their property, to do so, but be responsible for removing those bags as well and preventing that sand from getting into our drains. So what recourse would residents have to obtain sand if the city not provided? Do they just already need to have it? Or well, it's, it's absolutely available. Um, Home Depot, for example, there's been um, action there, activity there. Uh, there are residents who have them already, meaning that this is a part of their, their uh, preparation. Um, and this is something that we are, if they want to do it, then we're supporting them. However, the city of New Orleans is really working hard not to have sandbags throughout our urban environment that will jeopardize the system that's in place for drainage. Jessica Williams with New Orleans Advocate. Uh, this question is from Mr. Corban. Uh, yesterday you spoke about the uh, temporary pump that was brought in to assist at the Franklin Avenue overpass uh, because the original pump had a design problem. Is that the only pump that you're aware of that has a design problem? How many temporary pumps do you have to deploy in cases where original pumps fail? And in general, how comfortable are you with the systems we have to see? So in total, we have 11 locations where we have underpasses that are where we have pumps, and there are in total about 21 pumps that operate at all given time, at any given time. That is the only location that we found that is to be a problem in terms of whatever it's a design flaw or whatever we have not really determined the, the cause, but we're looking into it. And as I stated yesterday, we're looking for a long-term solution, but we will continue to monitor the other 10 locations to make sure that the pumps are working and then the, the fuel is, is available and, and we are confident that those 10 would operate like they did on, on Wednesday. And how many backup generators do you have to power pumps should power fail, fail from energy? Is it only turbine six? Do you have more frequency chargers or changers? Can you speak to that? Well, we have, in total, we have four. We have uh, ge pump generator one, three, f four, and five, and we have six. We have five EMDs, and we have um, several uh, frequency changes. I think two or three. I can don't have the number exactly, but we, in total, in in terms of available power, we have the ability to produce eighty megawatts, down to by two and a half, as I stated earlier before. But ample cushion and redundancy in terms of what we would need at a peak uh, um, need or or uh, yeah peak peak need. Mike Pearlstein, WWL TV. So, in case people need to be evacuated because of a rescue because of flooding, are there any designated evacuation centers? And even in advance of that, if people are trying to get themselves out of harm's way, 
Are there shelters, shelters of last resort or any plans for the burden to back here? The city of New Orleans doesn't operate shelters of last resort. However, we do have in place, as it relates to Rosenwald, is one example uh, for special needs, for our special needs residents. Uh, we have worked also in coordination with the state of Louisiana should we need to move people. Uh, that's why the coach buses at Zephyr Field are being staged there um, should we need to move people out um, to shelters that have been identified by the state, like in Alexandria and the like, as reported on yesterday. Uh, but we are staying very close uh, in communication with those uh, who are on the special needs registry. But again, we're asking sheltering in place and also people know their immediate or existing conditions and should be able to make decisions based on that, whether or not they choose to um, relocate move themselves into another area. Kimberly Kirk, Fox 8. For uh, Mr. Corbin, um, if you could just kind of revisit, you said we're down from 118 pumps to 117. If you could just kind of explain for our viewers what exactly that means, how significant is that, and are you concerned about that with this upcoming heavy rainfall? Again, as I stated before, uh, the we're not concerned about that downgrade or losing that, and it's not the pump that is not uh, available it's the power to for that so again as I explained we have two 25 Hertz pumps that typically are both powered by a a line that comes across the river